Hello, today is uh, the 24th day of November 2012. Welcome to this weekend's uh, technical analysis video looking at silver, gold to silver ratio, platinum, oil, and the Dow. And a, a quick little gold chart as well. So let's uh, get this thing started. Multiple time frames here from silver, starting with the longest to the shortest, and looking at the important point A's to point B's. This case here, the low is point A. The high is point B. Alrighty, so this is going back to 1913 with 100 periods in play, each candle, of course, representing a full calendar year. And the price is up about uh, 13,500% from its 1933 lows of 25 cents per ounce. So at least that's the estimated numbers for my research that uh, I've come across. As far as Fibonacci retracement is concerned, you have point A, you have point B. So point B started back here in 1980. This will stay as the significant Fibonacci level until either a clear breakout above uh, 50 or a clear breakdown below uh, 0 0.25. I'm going to bet that will be a clear breakout above. And then at that point, you would be saying, well, the point A will stay the same, but whatever the high happens to be, let's assume it goes to 120, then instead of calculating it with a 50 high, you'd calculate it with 120. You can calculate from different areas. You can count from point A, which we're going to do next, to point B, and then, you can, then the next one, you have point B to point C. Then you got this point to here, which is the same as the last one is. So those are the things we're going to take a look at. Also, people talk about uh, how this charts is for the paper and day trading and stuff, which it can be. But if you're looking to play the physical bullion game and you see a chart like this, that's what this is good for. This chart currently is telling us that it's had its run higher. It's had a very serious uh, correction, noticeable one, back up to the highs with a small correction since then. So that's telling us that uh, you've had your nice gains, but you're also in before you're breaking 50 because it's 34 is below 50. Simple math. Okay, so that will be that. Let's now try the from Fibonacci from point uh, here, which was after, of course, uh, this is when it pretty much started uh, allowed to be traded in the sort of like the way we're seeing it today. So to look at this, we're going to take a look on the five-month time frame. And originally, support, and then support, resistance, all that uh, mumbo-jumbo, finding uh, a nice stabilization at the 61.8%, keeping this play alive for this move to be a failed move. It has to hold, stay below this level, a confirmed breakdown. It didn't break down by the, su the support level, so it uh, wasn't a failed move. So the next Fibonacci is going to be from point A here to point B here. So we'll do that now. And uh, this is uh, what uh, we come up with, showing you how in this neutrality section here, this was from 2005 to 2010. It's since then gotten past neutrality where it had its breakout on September or August, September of 2010. You've had this nice consolidation. So let's move the Fibonacci again. Because it right now hasn't been pulling back down to this 38.2% level. It, it still may, but it hasn't shown it yet. And it doesn't have to. It sometimes needs to do that much. Or sometimes it does the 23.6%, which we'll look at now. And there we see how it's been finding great support at that level. Let's now uh, expand the Fibonacci levels. So we've already seen it from... The lows to the highs, so what's next? Uh, how about from this high to this low? No, it pretty much broke out in here. So that, uh, that one's no good. And I could talk about this high and this low. And, and it was important in, until it broke by. And I could say, well, how about from this low to this high? But I've already got a decent low down here. Why do I need this one? And it really hasn't worked out well anyway. So the only thing left on this chart that I look at is from this high to this low. We'll look at that within the weekly chart, which we're going to put on now. Some of the things I've been saying within this particular chart here, it did not have to make a higher high to here. It did not. That was fine. As long, of course, as it makes a higher low. Well, that's a higher low. 
So it doesn't have to make a higher high again. It can be lower here, but as long as it makes higher lows again. And even if, say for example, it does make a lower low from this area, say it goes like this, then as long as it doesn't retrace too much more than a 61.8% from here to here, and uh, do something like this, and I'll say we'll go from here to here to here to here to here. I won't even count these lows and highs as anything important. If, of course, that happens to be the case. On the clear breakout above here, the next SIG level will be about uh, 39. What would be ideal is after it does manage to break by the 35 and change barrier to make it to 39, pull back to 35, and then come back and uh, play around with that 39 area. Because once you're in the 40s level, you've pretty much uh, confirmed that this whole uh, fiasco's got a good chance of coming to an end. And outside of small uh, retracements, we should be set for uh, clear sailing up to the uh, next SIG levels, which is probably, again, even breaking on the 50. So the next uh, significant FIB level, I can go here to here, but that's not in play anymore once it broke down below here. Uh, then you got here to here, which is the one that we're looking at, of course. So let's look at from this one to this one next. And we'll look at this by using the daily chart. And on Friday... There we can see it had a decent sized gain. There's the 38.2% uh, retracement. It says 61 on 0.8 from low to high, but when you're doing the subtraction of such like this, it's the reverse, so 38.2. And that level was in at 31.5. You see that possible failed breakdown that oftentimes can get fast moves in the opposite direction. There's your possibility. And... Uh, there we go. So that's uh, looking uh, pretty decent now. So the next key high and low is from here to here. And we'll take a look at this by looking at the 10-hour chart. So there's that high and that low again. You had that nice correctionary phase at Fib 1. But there's, there's no resistance here. There's none. Wow, interesting. Well, I basically said the last time, if this thing breaks 34, which it kind of did, then you want to say, hey, wait a second, something's going on here. And now is this going to be that, uh, it's because this is bigger than a pierce. That's why I said bigger than 34. Now, is it going to be that large pierce? If that's the case, you should expect it to fall back below here early to mid this week. I don't think that's going to be it. Are we going to have a fast move in here, or are we going to find support at this level? Well, I've been playing a little game on this channel, on 2012 plays, where I've, I come up with setups. If they come into play, then we'll just see how for fun how they do. There's been two losses thus far. There are three different codes still in play. I'm going to add four more, with one being silver. So this is what must happen. It must not break 3465 and come back to 3350. So it cannot break past here ish and then come back to this level here. Because if it goes say, up here and then comes back, I'm not going to like it as much anymore. So that's why I can't do it. Okay, so it's got to do that. And then it comes back to 3350 with the stop at 3277. 3277, approximately here, which is just underneath that line. And the profit would be at 3540, which is the previous high from uh, February. Or the, excuse me, the high from a few weeks ago. And if the price gets past 34 after the entry, then 69% retracement from the low, it would be the stop. So what I mean by that is, Okay, so let's just assume that it comes back to 33.50. There we go. And now you're back here. So now, from whatever low you would establish to the high that you get, if it retraces back that of 69%, you'd be out. Now, the reason why 69% is the number is because you would expect a 61.8%. So you want to make it a little bit more for that little piercing. Later on, of course, there will be a short play with the Dow. We'll go over that 
when that one comes into play. So let's uh, continue with one final chart. The next point A to point B that you want to look at for silver is from there to there. To look at that, we'll use the four-hour time frame. And uh, there we go. So now all you can do with Fibonacci now is say, well, if these things go higher, well, where would these lines go to? And well, I would say this line going here, which would make this line going here, that would be the first level. If it goes up even higher than this line, would go probably there. That's how I would look at that as. And, uh, well, we're over 10 minutes, so I'm just going to end this for a part one. So part one is only silver, and part two is all the other stuff. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.